Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I uh, brought Melody Beatty with me today to read some meditations to get us inspired and hopeful today. Um, I just want to say that I was reading through the comments from my video from yesterday and um, you know, I, I always get a couple comments on here that people are like, Peter, how did you know exactly what I needed to hear today? Peter, thank you so much. And this is not me. Go thank Melody Beatty. She's the one that put the dates in the books and came up with the meditations. I'll just read them from there, you know? Um, I mean, every once in a while, I come up with topics. If, if you guys have any topics that you want me to talk about, whether it's to do with grief or recovery and addiction or relationships or marriage or counseling or anything, whatever you want me to talk about, please put in the comment section below and I'm more than willing to talk about it. Um, you know, I, I said last fall that I wanted to do more dedicated videos to addiction and recovery. So I think I'm going to do a few of those um, coming up because I want to do more addiction and recovery based videos. But I know people, I, for a while I wasn't reading meditations and people were like, I missed the meditation. So I got back to the meditation. So anyway, let me know um, what you want to hear in the comment section below because I mean, this is, I like to make these videos so that you guys have something to listen to to inspire you every day. So whatever you want to hear, I'll do. If it's meditations or stories or whatever you want me to do or sharing personal experiences in my life, whatever you want to hear, whatever topics, put it in the comment section below. Okay? All right, let's get to today's uh, meditation. Today is is June 18th and let's go in the language of letting go and see what it says in here today okay went to May went to Ju July now let's go to June 18th being vulnerable I like that one okay being vulnerable June 18th part of recovery means learning to share ourselves with other people we learn to admit our mistakes and expose our imperfections. Not so that others can fix us, rescue us, or feel sorry for us, but so we can love and accept ourselves. This sharing is a catalyst in healing and changing. Many of us are feel fearful of sharing our imperfections because that makes us vulnerable. Some of us have tried being vulnerable in the past and people tried to control, manipulate, or exploit us. Or they made us feel ashamed. Some of us in recovery have hurt ourselves by being vulnerable. We may have shared things with people who didn't respect our confidence. Or we may have told the wrong people at an inappropriate time and scared them away. Ooh. We learn from our mistakes, and despite our mistakes, it is still a good thing to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and honest. We can learn to choose safe people with whom to share ourselves. We can learn to share appropriately so we don't scare or push people away. We can also learn to let others be vulnerable with us. Today, God, help me learn to be appropriately vulnerable. I will not let others exploit or shame me for being vulnerable, and I will not exploit myself. Um, I love this meditation. I feel a little bit differently about it than she does, though, and it's kind of like through the years it's changed for me. Um, I love the idea of allowing myself to be vulnerable, and I love when others feel comfortable enough to me to be vulnerable, to share the really intimate personal parts of their lives and their selves, right? I think it's where the real human connection comes is when you share something with somebody else and if you've ever shared something and they're like, and they nod or they say, I'm sorry that you went through that, right? Like that's something that I learned from my friend Tanya was, you know, when she would like, I, I can remember like talking to people in the past and they would share something horrific that they had gone through. And, um, you know, whether it was like abuse in their childhood or whatever. And I can remember my Tanya, like, uh, my Tanya, my Tanya. I can remember my friend Tanya, you know, like with this, this girl putting her shoulder on this, you know, I don't know, this woman's shoulder and being like, I'm so sorry that you went through that. You didn't deserve that. Those are really powerful words, you know, to say to somebody when you don't know what to say, when somebody shares something like that with you, like that's really powerful. That's, uh, those are words of being seen and being heard and being validated. And I think in, in, Often, when we're sharing and we're being vulnerable with somebody, um, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be seen or to be heard or for somebody once in our life to say, I see you. I hear you. What you went through wasn't fair. You didn't deserve it, right? Like, I think that those are the vulnerable parts of ourselves that we share, right? But we're taught in society not to share vulnerable moments because if you share vulnerable moments, that makes you weak. That you're a weak person if you do that. If you cry, you're a weak person. If you share honestly about how you feel about something, you're a weak person. That's what society teaches us, right? Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is, she says in here about making sure that you trust the right people that you can be vulnerable around. I don't have people in my life today that I can't be vulnerable around. I think that's a bigger question, right? Like, when you are 
asking herself, like, like, how does she say it in here? Hold on a second. I just closed the book. Let me get back into the meditation. June 20, okay, here we are. June 18th, being vulnerable. She says in here something towards the end about, um, and it, we learn from our mistakes, and despite our mistakes, it is still a good thing to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and honest. We can learn to choose safe people with whom to share ourselves. We can learn to share appropriately so we don't scare or push other people away. What she's talking about there is not what, not trauma dumping on somebody. Like, not every time you call, see them or call them, be like, oh my God, let me tell you about what happened to me when I was, you know, four years old. Like, you know, it's a give and take kind of thing, right? And I think most of us know appropriately when not when and when not to share. If we don't, then I think that it's our it's our responsibility to help other people and be like, um, you know, maybe like I can help you find somebody else to talk to because I'm just your friend. If it becomes like two, three, four times, right? And say, I'm probably not the person to talk about this. Like, I, I feel really bad for what you went through. Like, you didn't deserve it. All those things, acknowledging all that. But if it becomes repetitive, then what's happened is you've turned into their friend that's become into their therapist and that's not safe. So you want to like maybe say, hey, can I help you find somebody to talk to you professionally? You know, can I, you know, whatever, like, let's go find you some books or whatever, right? Or a support group. Um, but I can't be that person for you because I care too much about you and um, we're friends and I'm not your therapist and I can't help you the way that you need to get helped. And that's being honest with somebody. That in its own is being vulnerable and being honest with somebody. Some people don't like to hear that, okay? Sometimes when you try to help people, they get pissed off. I've had that happen to me so many times in my life, right? And I can remember when I first started doing it, when I would say to somebody like, hey, like, you know, I mean, people in my life know that I'm in therapy. I mean, I talk about it in videos. Everybody in my life knows I'm in marriage counseling. All of our friends know we're in marriage counseling. Everybody knows I'm in individual therapy that I have been for years. They know the work I do, that I work steps in a 12-step program, and right? They know all that. But as soon as I say to somebody, like, something like, have you ever thought about maybe seeing a therapist? Why, why, why do you think I need to see a therapist? Like, all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm so transparent, okay, about how much I love therapy and how much I think it works, and you don't even need to have any problems to have therapy. But then I'll have somebody in my life that that's going through like the worst hell in the entire world. And I'll be like, have you ever thought about maybe taking that to a therapist? Why would I take that to a therapist? Are you insinuating that I need to? And it's like all of a sudden, that's not about me anymore, right? Like when I first tried to help people, um, I'm speaking to somebody right now that watches this video consistently. And I think that they know that I'm speaking to them because they tried to help somebody that they know. And they reached out to me about that. But I'm also sharing my experience. Um, Early on, when I had been given so much help, right, and I had been resistant to it, then what I started realizing was maybe I should be listening to people that are really wanting to help me because they really just care about my, my well-being. And I started listening to those people, you know, and... um I can remember like when my husband and I were having problems and calling my sponsor and she's like, y'all need to go see a marriage counselor. Like, I can't help you at this, right? She's like, you need to get a marriage counselor and she's like, and you need to do it like ASAP. After the accident happened, um, my sponsor was like, you need somebody to talk to, okay? Like, I, my sponsor was so supportive. Tanya, Alex, everybody was so supportive. But she's like, you've got so much in your head and you've got to talk to somebody about this, right? Like somebody that's not in this, you need to talk to somebody. And I'm so, like, I, I, a long time ago, I stopped, you know, my best judgment got me <laughs> into the situation of ending up in a 12-step program and other things like that. Like, I need to listen to other people that might have more knowledge than me. So I started listening to people that were just trying to help me because I realized that, you know, and I would try what they did most of the times. And if it didn't work for me, it didn't work for me. And I'd say, I really appreciate the, the suggestion, but like, that wasn't just the, that was just not the road that I wanted to take. When I started trying to help other people out of the kindness of my heart because I loved them and I cared about them, many times I was met with resistance or anger, you know? And what I realized at first, I was like, damn, like, did I overstep my boundaries? Did I say something? Overstep your boundaries because you care about another human being. Like, let's think about that for a second, right? When you try to help somebody or make a suggestion and we are worried that we're overstepping our boundaries by trying to help that person, right? And what I would do is I would take that on and I would say, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry, like I shouldn't have said anything. And then I would continue to see these people suffer and I wouldn't say anything, you know? And then later they'd say, well, you knew I was going through this stuff and you didn't say, I'm like, I can't win for trying. Like, or I can't, you know, what is the saying? Lose for trying or whatever. I mean, like I, there's nothing that I did was right, you know? So what I had to make the decision on was who did I want to be as a human being? 
you know? And the person that I wanted to be as a human being is I wanted to be somebody that was helpful to other people in situations. I wanted people to help me. If I wanted other people to help me, then I had to be receptive of their help. Sometimes their language didn't come across in the nicest way, and I had to help them with their language a little bit. Sometimes my language didn't come across in the nicest way, and sometimes they had to help me with that. But ultimately, the goal was that we wanted to help each other, right? If somebody was resistant to that or they didn't like to hear it, that was not on them. I didn't give them any more help or suggestions, okay? Because um, a lot of these people would be like, I don't know what to do. And then I'd say, maybe you should find a therapist. Why do I need a therapist? Blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, I'm like, and back in the day, I'd be like, I am so sorry. I should never have said that to you. I don't say that today. That's not about me. That resistance has nothing to do with me. Those people probably already know that they need to go see a therapist. That's why they don't want to hear that. Or they need to seek help in other ways, right? Like, they already know that. It's not about me. But, you know, the question about finding safe people that we can be vulnerable with. I don't have unsafe people in my life today. If you have unsafe people in your life today, reevaluate the people in your life. Okay? Like, I mean, that to me, I think, is paramount to where our lives should be. If you are a grown adult and can make choices about who you have in your life, and you have people that you deem unsafe to your mental health or your physical health, they do not need to be in your life. Okay? Like, I, that to me is so confusing, right? And, you know, if you're in very dangerous situations, please, I want to say this, seek professional help before you make any choices because those situations can sometimes get worse before they get better. So seek somebody that's a professional. I'm just sharing my personal experience. But I'm talking about people that are unsafe to me in my life, people that I don't feel like I can be vulnerable with or I'll share something with them and they'll use it against me um, or people that don't uh, validate my feelings or my emotions, like I validate in their feelings and emotions. If I don't have people that I feel like are safe in my life, that I don't feel like I can be my, my full self with or I can feel safe around, they're not in my life. Life is short. Very short. I'm not going to have people in my life that I don't trust, that I don't feel like I can talk to about things. I don't even care if they're fun to go out with for a night. I got rid of all those people. It wasn't worth it to me. You know? And if I've ever had anybody that has thrown some shit up in my face, you know, that is in my personal life, a friend of mine, and used it against me, that I've like shared with them something, that is like for me, that is a first sign to the exit door. I'm telling you right now, you know? I don't have people that are unsafe in my life today. Maybe that's why my life is so small. Maybe that's why my circle is so small. And I'm totally fine with that, you know? I would rather have one friend than 15 friends that I didn't trust and I couldn't be authentic and vulnerable around. I'm not gonna have that in my life today. I go deep with the people in my life. The people in my personal life, we go deep. We, go, we share shit about each other. We go deep. I know stuff about all my friends. They know stuff about me and not secrets to keep to use against somebody. But things to help each other get through things. I go deep with my friends today. I don't have unsafe people in my life. You know, thankfully, I'm not somebody that has unsafe family members. But I have known a lot of friends of mine that have family members that are not safe anymore to them. And what I mean by that, I don't just mean like they're afraid that they're going to like abuse them in some way. I'm talking about 50, 60 year old women that do not have any interactions with siblings or things like that because they don't believe them over things that they've said or they don't like the language that they've used or their belief systems don't uh, align together. And I'm not talking about just like, I like this and I like that. I'm talking about like people that are like, have siblings that like a friend of mine that's a lesbian and has a sibling that's homophobic. Like, no, that's not a safe relationship. And that's not your responsibility to convince that person to change, right? Like, so there are a lot of ideas of what safe relationships look like. But if you're living in life and you have friendships to you that you feel like, I can't tell this person that or this because I don't trust them or whatever, that should be, I mean, we talk about red flags, green flags. That should be a red flag for you that why is this person even in my life? Why are you wasting time? Why are you wasting time with people that you do not trust? With who, that you cannot fully be who you are around, your, around them. The people that you have in your life, the people that you love, should be people that you can be vulnerable around. Should be the people that you love the most, that you trust the most. If you don't, ask yourself, I'm not talking about coworkers and supervisors. We have to have those people in our lives or neighbors and things like that, right? But, you know, I, I realize not driving anymore and that I'm at home all the time. I cultivated those relationships with my neighbors because I wanted to trust my neighbors because I knew I might have to rely on them. 
you know? And my neighbor across the street, my two neighbors across the street, the one in the corner and one across the street, my neighbor next door that I go to the pool with and my neighbors next door over there. I mean, I implicitly trust these four people. They know my husband, they know everything about us, I know everything about them, and they're just neighbors. I developed those relationships over a period of time. It was important to me. I trust those people, you know? They all the time are checking in on Alex and I. Always asking me if I need to go somewhere, if I need something. If I went over there at 2 o'clock in the morning and I was like, I have to go somewhere, they would take me. You know? They wouldn't even ask why. So, I think it's important to have people in our life that we feel like are safe. I mean, you know, I feel that way with all the people in my life. Or they wouldn't be in my life. I don't have people in my life today that I don't feel like are safe. And you shouldn't either. That's no way to live through life, you know? So, ask yourself, what, what are the conditions of my relationships in my life, you know? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying you shouldn't either because why would you want to live your life that way? If you want to live your life not feeling like you can be honest and vulnerable and be yourself, I can get in a car with my friend Tanya Jean and you know she'll be driving us to the Fountain Pop place and we're listening to music and I'll have the window down. And I'm like, woo! I can be myself. You know, I can dance and be funny around my husband and his family. I can sing at the top of my lungs. I can cry in front of my family and friends and tell emotional stories. I can be myself 100% unapologetically. That's being vulnerable. If you can't be that with the people in your life, then you aren't fully living your life. And it's those people that are standing in your way. But it's really you're allowing those people to be there to stand in your way. And I realize that. And I was like, I, these people can't be in my life anymore. If I don't feel like I can trust them, then I can't, I can't have them in my life. If I can't cry or do something silly around them because they're going to look at me and be like, what is he doing? I don't want them in my life. I don't want them in my life. You know? So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.